Hello and welcome to my 42nd episode of my knitting podcast. Alright, welcome back to my podcast. I Today is Valentine's Day. Um, if you are celebrating, I know not that people might be celebrating, but if you're celebrating, I hope you're having a lovely day today with whoever you chose, choose to, to spend it with. Or if you're spending it alone, that's absolutely fine as well. <laughs> um, I personally, or in our house, we don't really celebrate uh, Valentine's Day. It's... Um, not really a thing, we don't do presents or anything. We're gonna have a nice dinner tonight, um, but that's more because we're home at the moment, we have a week off work, or almost a week, and so we decided that to make the best out of the week, we were supposed to go to a wedding um, abroad and we didn't manage to yeah, fit it in. It was a bit too short to go abroad. Um, it didn't work quite out, that's the downside of living on an island in the middle of nowhere <laughs> so uh, yeah it would have taken too much time to travel and do all the things and then come back and then start traveling again because yeah i do travel as part of my job um if you're new to this channel maybe you don't know but like i i am a pilot so i work and i go abroad most of the times or very f regularly so going abroad on holidays sometimes is not the most exciting um, and yeah I would have loved to go abroad for this um, uh, yeah wedding um, but yeah, it just didn't work the downside sometimes of having irregular work patterns it is just what it is and um, so we're making the best out of it we're staying at home uh, for this week which is lovely as well because people pay money to come to Iceland and we just get to live here uh, so that's nice as well and um, finally I have a bit of time to like catch up on everything and I had so many things I needed to do I'm also at the moment besides of working full-time I'm also studying in university I'm learning Icelandic and the second semester has just started in January and it is a lot of work like it is absolutely manic at the moment so finally I have some time to sit down and study and have done loads of studying in the last week, especially yesterday. I've studied for like, I think like eight hours straight. <laughs> so uh, good to catch up on that. But yeah, it is not as exciting than going to like abroad. Um, yeah, how did I start with that? Yeah, we we're having a, like a nice evening tonight. So we're going to do play some games and uh, have a, some nice dinner. And yeah, that's basically it. So, um, I meant to mention something at the beginning, so uh, I would like to mention my um, Free Your Needles Cull. Um, so this is a knit along or make along if you want to put some crochet projects in there as well or something else. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, that's super relaxed anyways. Uh, it's just basically a motivation for you to go back in your uh, baskets and pull out the long-term whips that you have maybe forgotten about or <laughs> yeah put away for whatever reason pull them out again decide whether you want to knit them or not or finish them or not and then just choose some that you want to knit throughout the year I chose 12 projects which sounds a lot um, but yeah I have maybe found a few more in some baskets so I'm trying my best to really work through my old whips and Stopping. I'm also trying to stop myself from casting on all the things because, yeah, I would love to knit much more than I have time for. So, um, yeah, S pull out your old whips. Uh, use the hashtag. You can use it on Instagram and Ravelry. I have a group there, so you can just insert it there. Ooh, my whole construct here is just falling apart. Brilliant. I thought I'd pop a little bit of color in the background, but that didn't quite work. There we go. There we are. 
Um, where was I? Yeah. Um, pop them uh, in the group if you want to. There's a group chat as well. It's not very active, I think. <laughs> Nobody has uh, said anything there, but I have seen some project on um, Instagram that uh, have been finished. And then I've also seen some projects on uh, YouTube as well. I saw Anniu Tinechi uh, finished some old sweat, I think. So I was very happy to see that, uh, somebody joining me there. Now let's start talking about my finished um, objects. I have to say, I finished this um, before, literally, uh, this whole section. And then I realized my microphone was not inserted. And my camera, camera decided to overheat, so that's not so fun. Uh, I have to do it again, but actually I w it was a bit rambly, so I'm gonna try to do it a little bit more precise this time and just get over it, because you don't want to hear me talking about my first finished object for 15 minutes. That's what I did before. <laughs> so, uh, first finished object is the one that I'm wearing. This one is the Moodoo Sweater by The Petit Knitter. Not to be mistaken with Petit Knit, so they are two different um, designers. Uh, so, Moodoo Sweater by The Petite Knitter, it's a colorwork, round um, colorwork yoke design and I used um, the beautiful Mota by Wool Dreamers. Oh, there we go. That's the yarn. Um, I don't have that much left, I have um, two of those left. So, actually, so I've got probably like 60 grams of that and about 60 grams of that as well. Right about, might be a little bit more. Um, and um, it used very little yarn to be honest. I am really happy with the end result. A few things to mention though. So I knit, I was between sizes and my gauge was ever so slightly a bit too tight. So I went for a size three and it worked out really well. I'm happy how it came out. So there we are, oops. Um, I love the length. Um, I initially knitted a little bit longer and then ripped it back, but I'm between the lengths in the um, pattern. So the pattern has a cropped length and a full length, and I kind of went in between. And um, yeah, that is just perfect. The yarn was lovely to knit with. It grows really quick because it's quite thick. Um, it does shed a little bit while it's knitting, so that's maybe something if you're wearing something black you might just need a, what is it called, a lint roller I think, so yeah. Um, and uh, the other thing is I sometimes had the feeling like my fingers were getting a little bit numb and I think it's because the yarn is fairly rustic and I usually, when I'm knitting, I always have my the yarn like wrapped twice around my finger, so I don't know if I kind of pulled a little bit too tight or something, but I kept on feeling like my a little bit numb in the fingertips, so sometimes I had to like put it away just for uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, knit on something else and then pick it up again. And um, it might have to, has to do as well because I used some small needles, I think it was like three and a half millimeters or something, so it might have been just a combination of fairly rustic thick wool with small needles. I don't know, but um, it wears lovely, like the wear is fantastic, it's nice and soft and warm, but not itchy, at least I don't find it itchy. Um, one thing, and I think it's a more of a design problem, or just how it weighs, like you can get that with uh, round uke sweaters with, that have color work in, but I feel like there's a little bit of puckering. You can't just see it now because I just... Um, like steam blocked it again. Um, I when I blocked it, I really made sure to like get the shoulders molded out. So I really like used pins and I kind of made almost like a little bit rectangular form because I could see that initially it was all riding up a little bit just because of the side of the 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 way a round yoke is. So I tried to like get some shoulders in there, which worked. And then like where the marks were left from the the pins, I, I used a hot iron and just run it over with a bit of steam. So that really worked a trade. Um, and then the color work is super even. Now it's, uh, it's super, 
easy to knit as well because it's just a two stitch repeat so you don't have long floats um my floats are long enough in the back um i've knit a lot of color work sweaters so i think that shouldn't really be a problem but it has a little bit to do i think with the rate of increase so yeah, the rate of increases are sometimes quite high and then in between the color work section so i think it's just the nature of how the garment is constructed and i've seen it on other people's finished uh, pictures as well so i'm not the only one who had that problem but i don't think it's a reason not to knit a sweater because you can actually like block it well use a hot iron and it worked really well um so and the finished project is absolutely fantastic i love it so can totally recommend and for me it's a nice sweater because it has a little bit of yeah, good memories with it. I bought this yarn in Barcelona when I went uh, with the girls last uh, autumn. Uh, we had a lovely time there and I bought this yarn there. It was the only sweater quantity I bought at uh, Barcelona. No, I'm lying. <laughs> it's one of two sweater quantities, but yeah, I finished the first sweater quantity, which is exciting. And um, I'm gonna make another colorwork sweater out of the rest, uh, like a little baby version, I think. Um, just because it's just enough to make something, but I'll show it the, the what I have in mind later on. One downside of it is a little bit, I, I seem to lose a lot of hair at the moment, so I feel like I can see the hair everywhere on the sweater, so I keep on constantly having to remo remove my hair from a sweater. Um, so it tracks a little bit of, like, catches the long hair just by the nature of how the fabric is, but yeah. Uh, that's my problem. It's nothing, nothing oh, wrong with the wool or the design. And I think the design is lovely. So the idea why I chose this yarn is I wanted something neutral kind of that I could easily wear with like maybe nice, um, I've got like some beige camel colored shorts, uh, like a skirt, and then I could see myself wearing it like with like brown leather boots or something. Um, so I think you can easily dress it up as well. That was the, the idea I had behind this. Um, so first finish object. Second finish object is my half and half triangles wrap, which is living up here. There we go. Ooh, so much stuff here. So there we are. It is finally finished. This has been on my needles for ages. There we go. It is absolutely humongous. Um, it is, so it's touching the ground and it's going all the way up to my shoulders, which I achieved by blocking it immensely. Like I really blocked the hell out of it. Um, this is some uh, wool in it, British wool. And I, I think I used three and a half millimeters maybe four, not too sure. Um, I did one modification, no, two modifications. The I used the German short rogue tutorial. I think that was from Katie Jack's Knits. Um, they had that on their Instagram maybe. Um, but basically, yeah, you just change the weapon turns um, to German short rows and then the only other thing I did is I um, used the free stitch I caught tutorial by Leslie Friend. And once I had finished it, so basically you have, let's see, you have the I caught edge running along the edge when you're knitting up, but then on the cast on and the bind off edge, you don't have that because, well, you just do a non bind off and normal cast on. So then I, on the bind off edge, I just did an I cut cast off, bind off. And on the other edge that didn't have a an I cord, I just did an applied I cord. You might think, oh God, that's a lot of work for just a kind of blanket. But yeah, if you decide to knit this one, you're already committing to a lot of knitting. <laughs> so apply making these last modification is not the end of the world, to be honest. 
and I'm quite happy that I did it because it looks very neat um, and it just finishes us off nicely so this is now living by our couch um, it's a bit too bulky I would say for a scarf I have knit another one before and I felt like it's too much around my neck and here in Iceland usually you don't spend that much time outside if you want to if you're outside you're having you're already wearing a big coat so the bigger your scarf is the more you have to kind of take out and off when you get go somewhere inside the houses inside are usually really warm so yeah I decided to leave this one by the couch and I think the other one is going to be a kind of blanket as well I never really wear it as a scarf so I might leave it like maybe on the bed if with guests or something like as a little blanket I don't know yeah there we go finished first finished um, long-term whip so happy it's off my needle it was about time to finish it it's been on my needles for over a year and yeah as much as, as I loved knitting it it is sometimes a little bit tedious, especially at the beginning and at the end when you have like 260 stitches and you're knitting row after row. It just takes so long and it's not really growing. So yeah, I'm kind of done with half and half wraps for the moment. I have another quantity in my stash that was meant to become a half and half triangles wrap and I think I'm going to leave it for something else. Um, yeah, but I can recommend the pattern if you're like after something really big and uh, maybe a blanket or something. I can totally recommend nothing wrong with the pattern, just a lot of knitting. And I think I ch I, I'm going to choose to knit different things for the foreseeable future. Um, the next uh, finished object is another one for my Free Your Needles color, and these are the finished blue ripped socks Whew. finally of my needles they have been on my needles for over I'd say half a year or something uh, they shouldn't take so long they're only three by one ripped socks super easy but every time I had to do something the cuff the toe something that needed a little bit of thinking I put them away I didn't finish it and then because I didn't take good notes, it was really hard to do the second pair, so the second one took me much longer than the first one. So you might remember I was knitting on these in October when Lily was here. And it took me three months to finish the second sock. Yes. Um, but here they are. So I chose um, a kind of like a modified eye of partridge heel right, there we go there we go it's knit and pearl stitches and yeah it looks really nice it's super nice and squishy and uh, the yarn is a opal four ply and uh, the name is tanzende wolken which means dancing clouds and it was some leftover yarn from a pair that I knit for my brother because every March he gets a new pair of socks, which reminds me I have to cast on his pair of socks for this year. He loves wearing my uh, woolen socks and so he gets a pair every year uh, for his birthday because he wears them at work. He works outside and he loves wearing woolen socks, so that's my treat for my brother. Um, Next finish object is something small and actually I finished two of those but I only have one left and um, so I recently just started knitting a lot of baby stuff because it seems like everybody around me is having babies which is lovely I'm surely my age <laughs> um, so I've uh, I can't remember if I saw, showed it to you last time, but this is uh, the finished Florentina um, cardigan. There we are. It is so darling. Oh my god. There we go. It is so, so cute. It's like a ripped uh, detail along the front and the uh, shoulders. Um, 
super easy to knit honestly it's like a four row repeat and i chose some um buttons that i had in my vintage button box the yarn is the uh Lisa dk i think that's how you say it it's uh, from julia Sla from uh, canada and uh, it's a 90% wool and 10% silk it's super wash wool so easy to wash for new parents um but absolutely so cute oh um this is the zero to three months size i didn't gauge swatch i honestly for baby nuts i never gauge swatch i, I don't have the time <laughs> i don't want to take the time to gauge swatch i'm always like if it's too big it's not so bad if it's too small it's not so bad um so there we go um so this is the zero to three month size and then i made another one that was six to twelve months um and i almost finished two skeins of the uh yeah julia sla this is all i have left i think it's like 60 grams or something no i think it was even less maybe 30 grams and i'm gonna as pl so all my plan to finish this one because i kind of feel like I should just finish everything. I could make some baby mittens. So they're called the baby mitten by Jennifer Berg. They are a free pattern on Ravelry. And I think I'm gonna just use that to finish the last bit of yarn and maybe include it um, with this one, uh, like the newborn size um, to have like a, a whole gift set. There we go. Takes me a long time to finish my sentences today. There we go. I'll leave it up there. It's cute. Kind of cute, isn't it? Oh, this one. So, um, I got the pattern gifted last year. So, um, I don't know if you know the shop Unit Toronto in Canada. Um, uh, so, this is a book by the owner of the shop. She's called uh, Claudia Quintanilla. And they gave me this book last year it was released last year and it has so many lovely baby designs or children designs it's uh, 24 patterns i believe if i can remember rightly and the they're all like kind of timeless pieces that are just so cute so this is the oops that was my phone um this is the florentina cardigan that i made and then once I have it out, I can show you what I'm gonna make out of the leftovers from the motor. I'm gonna make the kaleidoscope. There we are. So, um, can totally recommend the book. I mean, I've been using it now a lot for the cardigan and I'm gonna be using it for more baby nets since it seems like this is the perfect stash busting project small baby nets um, and the kaleidoscope whilst i'm on it here i might as well show you the yarn so i'm going to use the leftover motor so the idea is how was it again i think the idea was to use that one as a main color that one is one of the contrasting colors then it looks like the gilead i have another not a full skein but i have a small skein could be a lovely contrasting color as well and then i've got some leftover uh, knitting for olive merino heavy merino they're all kind of the same weight could get and i think that could be a lovely sweater for a little one i'm thinking of going for this one as the main color the dark brown just because it's kind of a safer color mm, and then maybe if i have leftovers i probably have a lot of leftovers so i might do the reverse one as well i don't know it's just an idea if i have time when I have time, but that's like a kind of plant baby knit. Um, yeah, um, that's all about my little cardigan. Oh, it's so cute. And it knits up so quick. I think I knit like, I knit it in like two evenings or something. So fun. Um, I was inspired to knit this one actually because I went on a work trip to Toronto and I had a long layover. So I went to see the shop in Toronto, Uni Toronto, which is a lovely shop. It's the second time I've been and their selection of yarn is like great. And it's a very 
inspiring shop, I want to say, because they have so many nice samples and the quality of, of yarn that they have is like really like right up my street. Like I like the kind of yarn that they have there. A lot of the, the yarn that they have there, I would say I've either used already or it's like kind of on my to knit list. I also had the honor to meet Claudia Quintanilla. So she's the owner, as I said, and she's also a designer. Uh, she designs all the patterns um, for the shop. And also basically she's, she's now publishing them on Ravelry. And uh, so it was so nice to meet her in person because she's like a very inspiring personality. Um, her life story is very, very interesting. So. I met her in the shop, we had a good chat and she was so kind and she gifted me some yarn. Um, and that leads me to my works in progress. The first work in progress, so that's uh, some um, gifted yarn. She didn't tell me to that I had to show it on my podcast or anything, so just to be completely open about it. Um, she just said here I think this color will suit you and which I find interesting because normally I would not go for that color but then I thought well maybe if somebody who's got like knows about yarn and colors and designing I should listen and give it a try so <laughs> there we are so this is the uh, Luna de Plata by Claudia Quintanilla and um, this one is knit out of the um, La Mana uh, Premier. I think it's a German brand, but yeah, I think that's how you say it. La Mana uh, Premier, it's 60% uh, mohair, 40% silk. So much more silk than normally, I think. Mm, and it runs at 300 meters at 25 grams. I find this color very interesting. It's not something that I would usually choose, so. Um, I'm excited to see how it looks like, but I know that I will like the design. I've seen it um, on the pictures there. And then you're using like some metallic thread. So this is some, I think she said it was from Japan. Japanese, yeah, made in Japan. Some uh, Japanese uh, metallic thread. I went for like a slightly goldenish color. Um, I think their sample has a little bit more like of a silver set one but it's because i'm kind of more like of a warm person i would say normally i tend to go for a golden kind of jewelry i say that wearing a silver ring and a silver watch <laughs> um but yeah i'm kind of like in between but i would say probably i'm a little bit more of a warmer person so i uh, i like uh, the idea of uh, putting a little bit of embroidery on some of my knitwear. I've never done it, so um, it's gonna be exciting. I know that she was talking about using some interfacing to give it some, to maybe make it more stabilized or something like that, if I remember. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try that at the end, but I still have a lot of knitting to do. So this is the progress of maybe like a week or so. The back and the front, they were like growing really quickly, but now I've joined in around and it's growing really slowly. It's three and a half millimeters with a lace weight yarn. And um, I keep on making mistakes. So I keep on having to like hold it against the light to see if I drop some stitches or like not drop them, but like maybe not knit a stitch properly. So I keep on doing that because it really annoys me if I don't do it properly. So sometimes I have to like kind of uh, let it down a stitch, pick it back up if I don't do it right. but. I think I've corrected all of the mistakes I've done so far and I'm gonna continue knitting on that. Now it's pretty splained stockinette from now onwards. Just have to pick up the sleeves later on and then yeah, continue knitting it. Unfortunately, I realized, only realized when I left the store that I have two different dye lots. So I don't know if you can say, see it on the, on the camera, but this one is slightly lighter than this one. So I need three balls for my size. And I have ordered the other dye lot to finish it because I think it's so much work. It would be a shame to see like a line in it and you can't really, I don't want to blend it in because then you would have a line through that you could probably see it on the inside. I don't know. I thought it would be easiest to just have uh, the 
correct dye lot for all of them. So I ordered another wool ball. I'm gonna have it with next week. Um, and then I'm gonna continue knitting on this one. Well, I can continue knitting on this one because let's be honest, I haven't uh, <laughs> knit on it that much. Uh, this is by the way, a lovely project bag that I got from my friend Kelly from Coco Knits. Um, she doesn't sell them unfortunately, but it's one of my favorite um, project bags that I always keep with me. There we go. First work in progress. So the next work in progress is another project um, that I, well, I got the yarn for um, from uh, Unit Toronto. They were so kind. They gave me so much yarn when I went there to visit them. Um, so this one is living in a very special project bag. So let me just read this from the website because I won't be able to remember that properly. So um, I got this project bag as well from uh, Unit Toronto. And um, this is made by a single mother's cooperative. So this cooperative was founded in 2005 to provide members with an alternative to traditional factory work. So the women create a variety of unique and handmade crochet, knitting, embroidery and sewing treasures. And for the um, corporation, they're able to earn a living wage, work reasonable hours and spend time with their children, all without leaving their homes. So these are some bags that are made by hand and I think it is so beautiful. So um, they have a nice pouch in in here. I've put some labels in here that I have, um, yeah, from some balls of yarn that I have already started um, to wind up. Actually, it's got two pockets, even better, didn't realize. And in here lives the yarn for the Azucena uh, pullover. Um, and this yarn is just so beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to cast this on. This is on my to-do list today. Um, so I chose the um, color. So it's knit in uh, Gepard Wild and Soft um, and Kits uh, Setter. And I choose the main color, the green, um, which is can't, I think one of them was called Olive or something. What was it again? Yeah, this is called Oliven. Um, this one is just called Green. And then I have a cream main color. There we go. I've got stuff everywhere. Whew, there we go. It's like a cream color. So this is gonna be the main um, contrast color and then the main color is gonna be the green. I think this is gonna work quite well with my eye color. And I'm excited to knit on this one. And then at the end, you can also embroider and like add some beads. It's a very feminine design and it is um, designed for a Chilean knitting festival. So Claudia's gonna go there. And um, so it was even nicer to knit this one. So you asked me, or they asked me if I was wanted to join knitting this uh, sweater. And when I heard it was uh, designed for this Chilean knitting festival, I thought, yes, I really want to knit this one because uh, my mom is from Chile. This sweater is designed, or the Azucena is um, inspired by a flower that grows in Patagonia. So, and that's the region my mom is from. So I thought, okay, it's just perfect for me. I'm gonna join it in you this or I'm gonna join knitting this sweater. Um, super excited. I know I like the fingering weight with mohair. I think it's gonna be lovely. And actually I'm really excited to try this uh, Gepard um, Wild and Soft because it's got 6% wool and 40% silk. So even more luxurious. And um, yeah, their mohair I think was Pretty standard, yeah, 70% co um, mohair and then 30% silk. So this is my next or soon to be work in progress. <sighs> um, I've tried to like contain myself to not knit, uh, start knitting on it straight away, but I think I'm gonna cast on today. And I'm thinking of maybe doing a little video and do like a vlog knitting this sweater, maybe. Let's see, let's see if I have time for that. But. That's the idea for now. Uh, let's continue with my next work in progress. And I think that's the last one that I'm, I might show you one more, maybe one, this one. Okay, 
So this one is the next entry for my uh, Free and Needles Co. And there we are. Some mittens. So this is the first one. And I have made some project progress yesterday, so a little bit. I've uh, knitted from here to marker all the way up to here. Um, did like two color repeats. And this is the Pepita mitten by Yu Yu Sandin. San Sandin? Sandin? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm butchering the name. Um, it is a dock tooth color work. And I'm using the Filcolana Pernia in. Uh, I think it was called Chinese Red and Charcoal. There we go. Um, I was excited to try this yarn and I quite like it. However, I feel like my gauge is a little bit off. So it's a little bit on the small side, but. I really want to. It's the second time I started fin uh, knitting these. So the first time I started, I knitted them on three and a half, no, sorry, two and a half millimeters. And now I went up to, I think these are three millimeter needles. Yeah, three millimeter needles. And these are these um, Adi Crazy Trio sock needles, something. Um, so quite like knitting on these, to be honest. Um, uh that's the first one and then i'm gonna knit the second one afterwards um they are a little bit snug i would say just a little bit <laughs> but i mean they're gonna be a little bit bigger once i block them and then as well once you add the thumb so i've tried them on thinking oh god that is way too small but then i'm thinking okay maybe it's a little bit better if i want to see if they fit if I go in like that because that fits actually perfectly so I've still got room to kind of move my hands so I'm gonna hope that adding the thumb will give a little bit more room to the whole thing hopefully I went for these colors because I think they would look nice at, for like my uh, work um, yeah that's the idea, to have some mittens that I can maybe work, uh, wear in the winter on the way to work. Because in the morning I always have cold hands, could wear them while it's driving maybe. There we go. Um, I love the pattern, the pattern looks so cool. It's just a lot to knit and um, you have to be very good with your floats in the back. It's not super even, but I think it's gonna even out with blocking, I hope. There we go. Love these, but really want to finish these. So I have to knit on these to finish these. Does that make sense? There we go. One last work in progress that I'm kind of knitting on whilst I'm on the go. And these are my Advent socks. And they're actually quite long now. I meant to actually compare how long they're supposed to be. So at the moment I'm just making a big old tube. For the first time ever, because I've never done an afterthought heel, so I thought these would be perfect for an afterthought heel. And holding them next to those, I'm thinking I'm not far off, actually. Maybe. I could knit them a little bit longer, but yeah, not that much, actually. So I should think about making, making the heel. I was thinking of contrasting heel and toe, but then I'm also thinking, maybe I should just use the rest of the yarn. I could do that. Let's see. Let's see what I fancy doing. But at the moment, they're just stripy socks. They're both at the same edge length now. And basically what I'm doing is to uh, store the yarn. I'm just basically putting it into the cuff um, to keep them nicely stored away. There we go. These are all my whips. Enough whips, right? Well, two active one, one very easy on the go. I think it's going all right at the moment. Um, acquisitions. I do have some acquisitions. The first acquisition is some yarn that I bought for, or I saw Lily 
from uh, Lily Kate makes. She was uh, knitting one of her old designs and I thought, oh, actually that looks really nice. Um, and the yarn looked really nice. So I asked her what it was and it was the um, magic, sorry, the baby cotton from by Yarn Art. And that's actually, um, she used like a dark blue. And um, the, then I thought, oh, I want to make something similar. So I'm think, I think I'm going to make the same tee that she made. So that is the Feels Right tee. It's an old pattern by hers. An old pattern of hers. Oh, God. I'm losing my words today. All right. So I'm going to make uh, the same tee, but in bright pink. Or in like a, a beige. Maybe. I'm not too sure. This was really affordable. One ball was one and a half pounds. So the whole tea cost like, I think I bought five balls of each color just to be sure that I have enough. I probably get along with four. Um, so it's super affordable. And this is 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. And you know me, I don't really usually knit with uh, that much acrylic. But she recommended this yarn um, and I'm thinking, okay, it kind of makes sense not to knit a tee out of wool. So I'm excited to try this out. I'm going to try this out and then I'll report back and let you know. Um, but that's the first acquisition. Second acquisition is some spinning fiber. And you might think, are you even spinning? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I have this intention of starting to spin and I thought okay I have a, I have some spinning fiber yes I do but it's like single color and it's kind of boring so I thought maybe if I have some nice spinning fiber I'm a little bit more like motivated to start spinning because I have a lovely spinning wheel there that I got for my 30th birthday which is two years ago and guess what I've not used since my 30th birthday Maybe like once or so. My spinning wheel. There we go. So, I bought some fiber. Um, I saw some beautiful fiber. Marlena was showing some that they have in their shop. Uh, I don't know if you follow Marlene Knits, but um, we kind of like knit our um, moody sweater alongside. And then uh, I saw that she was spinning and it looked so nice. And I thought, okay, I really want to get the same fiber that she has, but unfortunately, it like it's just too complicated to order online getting to getting to iceland usually you have to pay a lot of import same with i was going to england and i thought maybe i could order it there but actually yeah i was only there for a short period of time so i thought well i'll just order it from a uk shop so i went on um, i did had a little research and i found hilltop cloud they um sell some hand dyed fiber and that's what i was after and i bought two lovely braids i think that's what you call them the first one is a 60 percent super fine merino 20 percent baby camel and 20 percent tusa silk i don't know if that's good for me as a beginner but i just like the color <laughs> so there we are it is so beautiful oh my god so it's like a kind of gray and it's uh, blue and green and purple. I love it. So the picture was really lovely and I'm actually happy. I just took it out of the packaging before filming. And then the second one is almost as luxurious. That's 30% uh, Merino, th sorry, 70% Merino, 30% Cashmere. And that's in a bright kind of pink, purple, green-ish. Doesn't that look nice? So now somebody please tell me how I can spin this up. I'm not too sure what I'm supposed to be doing. I know people like prepare their fiber and like put in pieces of something. Or can I just start spinning from this? I think I have to do like an online course um, or watch a lot of videos. I might do that tonight. But yeah, here we are. 
me and some spinning fiber. Ooh, it is so, so beautiful. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be my new hobby whenever I have time. Have I mentioned that I have no time for anything? It's good that I'm adding more things to my to-do list. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be lovely. There we go. Don't fall into the candles. There we are. These are all my acquisitions. A lot, I think, actually, com like considering that I got a lot of yarn from Uni Toronto as well to knit uh, their lovely designs. I'm, I've been quite spoiled uh, the last few months, so I should stop buying. But actually, at the same time, I'm also using some stash yarn and I've finished some uh, old whips. So I feel not too bad about adding a little bit to my stash. <sighs> Looking at it, though, it is, I do have a lot of yarn. Maybe I can just show you. The whole thing is full of yarn. It's time for me to work on that. Yeah. Um, podcast recommendations. I have a few. Uh, a few that I... I don't know if I've ever mentioned them or not. But I think I have mentioned uh, Camille before from Camille Unit. But I really enjoyed their videos over the last month. So... I met her live in, or I met her in person in Barcelona, and she's absolutely lovely. So, uh, can totally recommend watching her videos. And then I really enjoyed uh, those twins who knit lately. So, um, it's a kind of new to me podcast, and I've kind of binge watched all the old videos. Uh, Jessica and Rachel, they are kind of, I think, my similar or similar age than me, and I really love their style and their. Uh, projects are like kind of things that I would also wear so can totally recommend watching those as well. Anyways I think I'm gonna let, leave you there because I'm kind of running out of time now. I've got lecture in less than 30 minutes and I need to read a few more pages before I go into that lecture and um, I also have to clean up the mess. It doesn't look so bad now but believe me it is bad. The behind the scenes is whew. something else. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna leave you there. I hope you enjoyed this kind of rambly episode. I think it's a little bit of a longer run. So hopefully you enjoy it. Um, let me know if you have started working on some old whips. I'd like to hear that. Maybe I have inspired you. Um, that would be lovely. And then if you have some good podcast recommendations that I could watch, let me know. I'm kind of running low on content or like low on people that I'm enjoying to watch lately. So I uh, would totally appreciate some good new recommendations. Please let me know. All right, I'm gonna leave you there before I rumble on longer. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, as I said, and uh, I hope to see you very soon. Until then, keep on knitting and yeah, take care, bye-bye.